Welcome to SEI Technical Presentation. This is Lucas Gao, President of SEI Dallas Chapter. Today, our speaker is Anas Ahmed from Stantec. Anas is a structural engineer in Dallas, Texas office of Stantec. He has experience in design pit build projects and design build projects. He has designed steel and post tension shutter bands on design build projects in Texas and designed several curved steel bridges with complex geometry. He is currently working on a railroad viaduct for a fast paced design build project in Chicago. He earned his undergraduate degree from National Institute of Technology, Tree Chai, and Master at University of Texas at Arlington. Today, he will be presenting Loop 375 Design Build Project in El Paso, Texas. Please welcome Arnest. Thank you, Lucas, and hello, everyone. Here is an outline of presentation that I would go over today. We will begin with a brief introduction to Stantec, where I would give you an overview about Stantec, who we are and what we do. After that, I will move on to give you a brief project description and give you a bird's eye view of the project and various landmarks in the project. Then we'll briefly talk about the two bridges that utilizes these long spanning straddle bends, as you can see in the background, and associated challenges that we face during design and construction phase. After that, I would move on to briefly touch on some aspects of analysis and design of these straddle bends. Finally, we'll conclude the presentation with some lessons learned and open the floor for any questions. Also, I would like to thank Robert Broderick from Contractors Team as he was a helpful resource on a couple of slides in this presentation. Introduction to Stantec. Stantec is an engineering design and consulting firm with its headquarters in Edmonton, Canada, with its presence around the globe and has over 22,000 employees working in over 400 locations across six continents with a total revenue of about 4 billion USD. Stantec specializes in these various sectors as listed here, and I'm a part of a Bridge Group under Infrastructure Division based in Dallas. Stantec has a strong presence in North America and has worked on various multi-billion dollar projects as lead design engineers around the globe. In recent past, Stantec has won uh, many alternate delivery projects in Texas, such as Loop 375, which we are going to talk today in El Paso, Harbor Bridge in Corpus Christi, and State Highway 288 in Houston. Project description. Here I'm going to give you a brief project overview of Loop 375 Border Highway West extension project and then talk more specifically about the design of the two bridges with long spanning straddle bends. This was a design build project with over half a billion dollar construction cost and Stantec was the lead design engineer. As you can see from the picture in the left, 375 highway is a loop around uh, El Paso downtown and the corridor that we designed as shown in red uh, was a part of this project was an alternative toll route to I-10 to relieve uh, congestion traffic congestion in and around downtown El Paso. Also as you can see um, 375 runs parallel to I-10 along some sections. Another important as aspect is to note that this is right next to US-Mexico border. The project limits are from Racetrack Drive near Donovan Road to US-54 uh, with a total length of about 10 miles. From the picture on the right, the project was divided into different work areas in the priority of construction with work area one in downtown being constructed early on. The project began in 2013 
and was open to traffic late last year. All right, this is the bird's eye view of the entire project looking east. As mentioned in previous slide, 375 runs parallel to I-10 for most part. As you can see in this image, 375 is the last highway closest to southern border. So there was a lot of coordination with the CBP, Customs and Border Protection, and uh, IVWC, International Boundary and Water Commission. And everyone working on the project needed a security clearance. As mentioned in previous uh, slide, the project begins at Racetrack Drive near Donovan Road and ends in downtown close to US 54. We had about two multi-level interchanges. As you can see in yellow here, the other one is near the downtown and a challenging right of way coordination with railroad alignment weaving through 375's alignment. Uh, you can see that railroad for most part runs parallel to um, 375 and right around midway in the blue highlighted area crosses over 375 where we designed those 11 steel straddle bends which I'm going to talk more about in coming slides. Uh, there are about 34 bridges on this project with uh, six railroad crossing bridges. The longest uh, viaduct is all most about 1.3 mile long, close to the end of the project limit. This viaduct primarily utilizes Texas pre-stress concrete eye girders, which is typical in Texas. And it also has a single long span plate girder for a railroad crossing with, a, with about 60 degree skew. Substructure for this viaduct includes traditional multi-column bends with two and three uh, column post tension straddle bends. There are single column hammer heads which are 84 foot wide. Another important aspect to note is Rio Grande River which flows almost parallel to 375 as shown on the right side of the picture. Runoff from I-10 and US-85 and now the new 375 are all routed to Rio Grande. Due to the addition of uh, new 375, which not only increases the impervious surfaces, but also obstructs the natural drainage route from I-10, which made the drainage very challenging. Due to this situation, we ended up with about 24 culvert crossings in this corridor, among which many were bridge class culverts and some were designed for railroad surcharges. Some sections of this project were under FEMA floodplains and several bridges that were in these floodplains were designed for scour or other mitigations were taken to minimize the scour. All right, bridges over railroad. So these are the two bridges that I'm going to discuss in detail during the remainder of the presentation. These bridges have 11 long spanning straddle bends as the main line alignment crosses over the existing UPRR and BNSF railroad tracks. During initial design phases, there were three options that we ventured into, which we will look in the next slide. Uh, these are the three options for straddle caps we investigated. The first option is post tension caps. Uh, this is the most economical amongst the three options listed here. They can be constructed in place, but they need shoring towers to be erected over the railroads and, and need a lot of coordination with the railroads. Construction would be very difficult as railroad only provides a four hour closure window. They require stage construction and can be extremely labor intensive. The second option is steel caps. This is the most expensive amongst the three options, but the prefabricated steel box can be shipped to accelerate the erection. This option is 
the lighter, lighter than post tension caps and optimizes the foundation design. The third option is a hybrid between first and second, uh, which is a post tension steel cap. This option eliminates the cons from option one and two as it doesn't require shoring towers. Uh, this essentially uh, is a steel box filled with um, concrete and post tension. Uh, and uh, this, this option would reduce uh, coordination with railroad authorities as it would not need um, shoring towers because the steel uh, box would act as a shoring box. This option um, is cheaper than option two as it requires about 60% of the steel quantity as compared to option two, but still required staged pouring and was not economical for foundation de uh, design as it was pretty heavy. We developed design for, we developed like complete design for options one and two as requested by the contractors for them to exactly estimate cost and uh, time impacts. After reviewing, contractors went with the steel option due to the reasons mentioned in next slide. As discussed in previous slide, a uh, contractor did a constructability review of steel cap versus post tension cap, option one versus option two, after we finalized our design drawings and they concluded steel cap would cost them about three and a half times more than the post tension caps, but would significantly reduce the construction management and coordination effort with railroad, which would increase the construction time by about two years. Due to these uh, challenges in coordinating with railroad, they ended up using steel caps. This is a rendering view that was developed during the schematic phase. We coordinated with the uh, uh, railroad authorities by submitting exhibit A's to get their approval before beginning our detailed design. When laying out the column locations, we needed to consider a few things. Uh, the first thing that we needed to consider was the permanent substructure clearance from the railroad track per the project technical requirements, which uh, pointed to the guidelines for railroad grade separation, which is a document jointly developed by UPRR and BNSF. Uh, the next thing that we needed to consider was the ARIMA vertical clearance envelopes. Uh, the third thing that we needed to consider was we need to uh, take into account two future tracks uh, and a railroad access road when laying out these columns. Based on these constraints, uh, we came up with the column locations and the lengths of uh, straddle were ranging from about 130 feet to 140 feet. Now I'm going to talk a little bit about the post tension design of straddle bends. Uh, this is a cross section of the bridge. As you can see, we have uh, two existing railroad tracks and two proposed uh, tracks that needed to be considered for laying out the columns as discussed in previous slide. When designing long, long straddle bends as post tension members, typically from our past experience, Mostly post tensioning is needed if center to center column distance is more than 60 feet. This is just a rule of thumb. The 60 feet comes from the maximum rebar length, which needs to be spliced if straddles are more than 60 feet. And uh, these rebars get a bit crowded in conventional reinforced bend. There are many other factors uh, also, such as deck placement relative to supports, as this would uh, decide the maximum moments in the cap. Also from past experience, if the maximum service moment in the cap uh, is more than 20,000 kip foot, then it's a good idea to post tension the caps. The lengths of straddle bends here are all over 60 feet, so post tensioning was needed. Once it's decided you need post tensioning, the next step is to select a cap, sec cap cross section and produce a tendon layout in the cross section as an input to the software. 
This can be done by some quick hand calculations by checking stresses at critical sections at various construction stages and making sure these stresses are within allowable per ashto. We had analysis model to run two construction stages with dead load of the cap and girders and a final condition of straddle bend with live load to get the maximum service moments for each case to compute the stresses at each post tensioning stage. As you can see here from the images, uh, we usually run uh, two models in two different softwares just to make sure the live load analysis is done accurately. On the left hand side, we have RCPR analysis of live load to compute the maximum moments in straddles and we compare it to the MIDAS model on the right hand side. We found the RCPR model to be a bit conservative as it doesn't consider the 3D live load distribution factors, whereas MIDAS model does, which is uh, more accurate. Oh, once we have the maximum moments from the analysis at the critical sections for both construction stages, which usually is at the center of the deck in a two column straddle bend, we can easily calculate the stresses by assuming a preliminary number of strands. We would need to confirm if uh, stresses are within allowable at each stage. Usually the most critical stage is when the support forms are removed from bottom of the cap and the girders are loaded on either side. In this stage, the cap cannot support itself by any amount of reinforcing and post tensioning is required. We can assume a preliminary number of strands and its strand pattern to compute the stresses in the cap at the critical sections. In this stage, we are just checking the stresses under the sulfate of the cap and girders only. The second step is to compute uh, the final uh, stage stresses when the bridge is open to live load. The moments are extracted from the analysis model and stresses can be calculated for these moments. As expected, you would see compression at the top and tension at the bottom due to self-weight, dead load and live load. And we will have tension at the top and compression at the bottom due to post-tensioning. As, as you can see from the color-coded diagrams, uh, the preliminary strand pattern and the number of strands should be accordingly adjusted in such a way that the net resultant for applied load and post-tensioning should produce all compression in the section within allowable limits permitted to ASHTO in final stage. This is an iterative process and the only variable is the geometry of the cap and the number of strands. For the stress calculation due to post-tensioning, uh, we also assume an average of 30% loss due to uh, both long-term and short-term losses. Once this preliminary analysis is completed, then tendon layout and bend cap cross-section can be exactly modeled in the software to analyze the stresses. These are all the allowable limits at various stages per ASHTO LRFD based on 7000 PSI concrete. The governing stress is uh, usually the final tension at the bottom of the straddle bend. Uh, it's uh, 300 PSI for 7000 PSI concrete assuming a corrosive environment. As mentioned before, uh, typically we have five construction stages listed here for post tension straddle bends. Firstly, uh, columns and cap is constructed with shoring in place until the concrete hardens and achieves its initial strength. Once this is accomplished, the post tensioning for first stage is done with shoring support still in contact. After this uh, stage of post-tensioning, shoring towers can be removed. Girders can be placed in backward span and then in forward span, followed by post-tensioning for remaining tendons. The final stage is to place the precast panels and pour the slab uh, on top of the panels and uh, cast the barriers, which uh, completes the construction process. This is shown in, uh, in, in the next slide. As discussed in previous slide, here are a few pictures from our analysis model for different construction stages. Stage one and two cap is installed with the stage one post tensioning done while the support forms are still in place. Stage three 
the girders are installed on one side torsion needs to be checked in this condition typically doesn't go on as you have a large section in the cap and which has sufficient torsional capacity stage four uh, the girders are installed on the other side of the cap uh, remaining uh, post tensioning tendons are jacked uh, finally uh, stage five and six um, uh, the deck is uh, poured and the barriers are casted uh, and the bridge is open for live load uh, which completes all the construction stages uh, for each of these uh, construction stages we would need to investigate the stresses in the cap and make sure they are within uh, allowable limits uh, in this slide i'm going to briefly talk about uh, modeling the tendon in the software uh, typically, the tendon profile is a smooth parabolic curve uh, without any kinks in profile as this would attract uh, unwarranted stresses at these locations. Uh, in uh, MIDAS, we were able to model the tendon profile by importing it uh, from a spreadsheet at every tenth point along the bend. The other important thing in post-tension design is the tendon losses, which can be easily computed by defining tendon properties in uh, the software and linking them to the appropriate time-dependent uh, material properties, such as creep and shrinkage. Uh, once this is completed, the software calculates the short-term or instantaneous losses, which are friction, anchorage, slip, elastic shortening and uh, also the long-term losses which are creep, shrinkage and relaxation and provides an output for each tendon along the length of the tendon. Here we are going to talk about the concrete hinge. This is another critical detail in designing straddle bends which is the connection between the post tension cap and the column. We analyze this connection as a hinge and it's modeled in software using elastic links. Uh, we release the moments in Y direction, which is uh, along the bridge, and the cap is assumed to be free to rotate in that direction. Uh, here are a few cross-section views, elevation view, and a plan view of the concrete hinge uh, that we have used on uh, straddle vents. We have used this detail on various past projects, and it worked out pretty good. Uh, this is very uh, uh, cheap and uh, economical uh, detail compared to other costly alternatives which are typically used on straddle bands such as uh, pot bearings which are very expensive. Uh, this uh, is uh, relatively cheap because it utilizes just elastomeric material uh, as a bearing surface and couple of reinforced uh, concrete cylinders to model the hinge behavior uh, so it ends up being an effect efficient connection uh, you can see the, the picture uh, from one of our projects where we have utilized uh, this hinge uh, after uh, stage one of post tensioning uh, done this is one of our projects in uh, south texas these are the results from midas civil uh, which can be conveniently exported to Excel spreadsheet and the results can be verified against the allowable stresses for each stage easily. Uh, here is a plot of stresses from Midas output from previous slide. As you can see, the bottom section is in tension and is close to the actual allowable limit. Also, we have a lot of capacity in compression, but the tension stresses are close to the allowable limit. Uh, input parameters can be easily be modified to optimize the section if necessary. Uh, Midas comparison with other softwares. Typically, um, QA, QC process in design build projects needs an independent engineer to verify the design of the critical uh, elements, which needs to be checked independently using an alternative software. This was accomplished uh, on the straddle bends that we designed uh, using Midas for both steel and post tension bends and these were verified with the CSI bridge by an independent engineer and uh, as you can see here are a few of the screenshots from CSI bridge. Uh, these are uh, 
the outputs from CSI bridge and plots from the results obtained from CSI bridge. Uh, we compared the results with uh, Midas results and they were uh, pretty close uh, within uh, 5% and uh, the independent engineer uh, uh, confirmed the results from Midas were uh, uh, good. Now moving on to the design of steel straddle bends. So these are few screenshots from various construction stages from software. We ended up using six construction stages similar to post tension straddle bends design. As you can see from these pictures, first columns were constructed in stage one. Then the steel cap was dropped down onto the columns on stage two. It was critical to not have any field splices in the bent cap and place the entire steel cap on the columns at once uh, due to railroad coordination. And therefore, uh, we had to keep the weight of the cap to a minimum within the lifting capacities of the crane. Also, the cap was hauled from Arizona to El Paso, so we had to keep in mind the hauling limits. Once the steel cap was placed, the pre-stressed concrete girders were installed on uh, the steel cap and on the both the spans uh, as shown in construction stage three and four. After the installation of uh, precast girders, concrete uh, panels, precast panels were placed and then the cast in place concrete slab was poured over them in stage five. Finally, the barriers were placed and the structure was analyzed for the live load in the final construction stage. In each of these construction stages, we were able to analyze and check the stresses in straddle bends and optimize the plate thicknesses used along the section of the straddle bends efficiently. This allowed us to reduce the weight of steel cap to a maximum of 400 kips, within, which was within the hauling limits and lifting limits of the cranes. As mentioned before, we had a total of about 11 uh, steel straddle bends on these uh, two bridges over the railroads. Uh, with the maximum length varying from 110 feet to 140 feet with a section depth varying from 8.5 feet to 12.5 feet uh, respectively. In this slide, we are going to talk about the post-processing and design features of uh, Midas Civil. Uh, Midas Civil has a steel code check feature which checks the uh, design uh, stresses against uh, allowable uh, uh, stresses per AISC manual, which is pretty handy. We were able to use the outputs directly into our calculation books. Uh, the other thing that was challenging part of the designing was coordinating with the fabricator and keeping in mind the avail availability of the material and limits of their construction which was a critical part of the design process. Needless to say, there were a lot of iterations before we finally pinned down the geometry of the box. Uh, in this slide, uh, we can uh, see the stress outputs on various uh, parts or the sections of the cap and uh, we can easily change the plate thicknesses to reduce the dead weight to be hauled. Um, on the right hand side, there are a few uh, details of our design drawings. Uh, these steel boxes were uh, fracture critical members and we needed to get special approval from Textart. The box was also painted white inside as required by Textart guidelines for better inspection due to its fracture critical nature. All the tension wells and connections were accordingly designed to the corresponding stress categories, which are allowable per the, which are allowable for the fracture critical members. In this slide, you can see a couple of pictures taken while uh, erecting the steel caps over columns. You can see the two tracks that directly go underneath these straddles. Uh, on the bottom, this is a picture taken after the deck is poured. Uh, you can see I-10 uh, just uh, running along 375's alignment and uh, railroad uh, going 
underneath the straddle bends. Contractor did a really good job in installing the steel caps. There were no construction issues during erection of these steel caps. They developed a full uh, 3D model of the straddle bends uh, from our construction documents, uh, mainly to coordinate and verify all the construction clearances uh, needed to installing the caps and turning the girders between the caps and uh, squeezing the cranes between the railroad tracks. So this model was to verify and confirm all those clearances. In this slide, I'm going to talk about uh, conclusions and lessons learned. Uh, so uh, there was a lot of coordination with the railroad authorities in getting the exhibit A's approved. Uh, so we had a lot of back and forth with the railroad in finalizing the column locations because there were two uh, future uh, proposed tracks. So uh, it was challenging to pin down the column locations and, uh, and also the coordination with railroad uh, while uh, erecting these uh, straddle uh, caps was uh, very challenging as the railroad only provided a four hour window to install the caps, but contractor did a really good job in erecting these caps. The other thing was uh, we had to keep in mind the hauling and lifting limits of the cranes. So we have to keep the weight to a minimum. The next thing uh, was the geography of the soil and the properties where uh, very variable in this area. So uh, we had a drill shaft foundation uh, socketed into rock, but due to the variability of the rock, uh, the, the tip elevation uh, had to be revised uh, while uh, the drill shaft were drilled in the field. The, lastly, um, we worked very closely with fabricators, uh, taking their input in and finalizing the details and connections and uh, miscellaneous uh, welds and such, uh, keeping in mind their uh, um, clearances and such. Uh, so uh, these are a few of our conclusions, uh, and I would uh, conclude my presentation and. Uh, open the floor. If uh, you have any questions, uh, feel free to email me or Lucas. Thank you.